Hello YouTube, my name is Jack, welcome back to Mario War Gaming. If you haven't seen our other videos, you can go check up there in the top right hand corner for bat reps and stuff like that. Yes, I did shave my beard, November I guess. They've culled my boy. Today we're going to be looking at the new compendium for Forge World at all of the individual Elder units and I'm going to tell you what I think and which of my little units that they culled! Before we begin, I did scrounge some of the, or oh, all of these photos off the interwebs, so to sorry for the uh, horrible quality of the pictures, but you can find them all over the internet, there are people doing other videos as well. But, yes, they did cull some units from the game, including, well not from the game, but from this book, including my boy, the big vampire raider. He no longer exists in this book, he will not be in here, so I cannot review him along with all of the Corsairs. They kind of got culled and they are now going to be Legends choices, which means you can still play with them with your friends, but you can't play with them in the competitive sense. Which kind of sucks because it was really fun taking a big plane to a tournament and watching all of the Space Marine players be like, What the heck is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm going to take you through one unit at a time, starting with Irolith, my main man, the Phoenix Lord from Forge World, Irolith. He is really, really good. He was 150 points before, he's dropped down to 140 points now, and as you can see, maybe, from the poor quality, his gun has changed and his some of his abilities have changed as well. So firstly, he now has an aura that can give reroll hit rolls of 1 to Shadow Spectres, which is awesome, uh, but his leadership thing where every enemy unit within 18 inches uh, took an extra dice of morale and discarded the lowest, including within range of Shadow Spectres if they were on the board as well, has now changed to just minus 1 leadership within 6. I'm fine with that, who cares, morale's kind of dead anyway, um, but he now also has a 4 plus in vulnerable as well. That is so good, because it does say Shadow Spectre's Phoenix Lord as the rule, which hopefully means that the rest of the Phoenix Lords will also be getting a 4 plus in vulnerable save as well. Thank feckin' God, finally! They've been waiting three years to get invulnerable saves. The amount of times people shoot you with like a las cannon, you fail your five up save because you have a two up, and then just six damage. There's your 150 point character removed from the table with one gun. So it's still, it, you can still take six damage, but you know, of course now we have our four up invulnerable, which is really, really nice, and you can protect them as well. So you can give them a three up invulnerable to all of the different Phoenix Lords, which is really good. Um, and then on top of that, um, he also is now still minus one to hit in combat and shooting and all that good stuff, but his weapons have changed. So the Shadow Spectre weapons, which used to hit and then hit again and then hit again three times, and his was four times, have now changed. His is now Assault 3, uh, Strength 8 minus 4, 3 damage. So he can do more damage than he did before. Now he can do a maximum of 9 damage. I think before it was 8 damage. And it is, I think, minus 4, because I think before it might have been only minus 3 from memory. But yeah, he's actually pretty dang good in shooting. And in combat now, he no longer has that weird charge rule where he gets extra strength. He's just flat strength 5 instead of strength 6 or strength 4, which he used to be. Uh, minus 3, 2 damage. So, And he still only has 4 attacks, which is a little low for Phoenix Lords. I think they should have about 6. But he is really, really good now. 140 points, so a 10 point decrease. His gun got better. He gets reroll hit rolls of one, and he gets the four up and vulnerable save. Thank the gods, finally. Moving right along to his little buddies, the Shadow Spectres. They have changed quite a bit as well. So now, their guns have changed, and most importantly, they can now deep strike. They've needed this for three years. I emailed Forge World about five times on separate occasions, like 12 months apart, and they still did nothing about it, but Finally, they can finally deep strike on their own instead of paying a CP for it, so they can bring them down a unit of 10 with uh, Aerolith and finally get those real hit rolls of 1 from Aerolith as well, which is really, really nice. And the only other thing that changed is their, um, their guns. Their gun has changed, so now instead of having a flamer, uh, which is what they used to have, it's now range 18 instead of range 8 or whatever. It doesn't auto hit anymore and it is a blast. So you can bring them down much further back now and if you're shooting like a horde of orc boys and you have 10 models and they have 11, then okay, take your, th what is it, 60 shots. 60 shots! I'll take that, that's pretty good. 60 shots, strength 5 minus 1, real, hitting on 3s, reeling 1s. With Doom, just wipe whatever unit you want to shoot at. Any Horde unit, and it's gone. There you go. 
pretty good against a uh, horde of marines, marines as well, like that have, let's say, six models in the unit, you can just, boop, 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 and just kill them all. And then their focused uh, shot has also changed, so instead of doing the stacking hits as of what it used to, it now is just flat three damage, but you only get one shot. Pretty good, seeing as that both of these modes are assault, so if you want to start on the board, for example, you can move 12, you can auto advance them six, so you can move 18, and then you can have a range of 24 or 18, and you can still hit on threes, and with Irolith or an Autark, real hit rolls of one as well. That's pretty good. I mean, that's an aggressor killer if I ever did see one. Strength six minus three, three damage. Not too bad. And now we move on to probably the most overpowered unit, in my opinion, from the Eldar section, the Hornet. This thing, damn, it is good. It used to be, I believe, six shot strength six minus three, two damage with its Hornet pulse lasers at 115 points. And if you advanced, it was minus one to hit it. It kept all of its stat line the same, but it dropped 25 points with the Hornet pulse lasers. And you traded a, uh, an AP for an extra strength and then two less shots. So now it's heavy two per gun, so four shots, and the range is obviously less. It's not 48 anymore, it's 36. Strength seven minus two, two damage but it gets innate minus one to hit. So for 90 points, if you take it with Expert Crafters, which is better now because you have less shots, so higher the chance of rerolls, and uh, it is minus one to hit permanently, you can now have two up armor save with Masters of Concealment, uh, four shots, rerolling a hit and a wound, strength seven minus two, two damage, moving 18, range 36, ignoring the movement because it's a vehicle, minus one to hit, Damn, this thing is great for 90 points. That I would be taking at least three of these like every single game. I only have two, but if I was playing competitive, Hornets, man, they're the key. And now for the one that I am most excited for, the Lynx. This thing is really cool. I have a nice, cool looking little Lynx. Ah, oh, I've been wanting to play with him for so long, but he used to be 370 points. What? He dropped 140 points down to 230, so now it's very playable because not only did they change him 140 points, they have changed his gun as well. It used to have a rule as well where it would lift off the ground and it would fly like a flyer, but it wouldn't get wings of cane and it would still be a heavy support choice so you could like take objectives and stuff. It was very janky. So now they've just said when you advance, you just automatically move an extra 12. That's great, who cares really about that? What you're in it for is the gun now. So now, this thing is 230 points at its cheapest with a shuriken cannon or a scatter laser underslung, but it gets, what, heavy six? Range 48, strength nine, minus three, three damage. For 230 points, that is very playable. I will take that any day of the week, thank you very much. Sit this at the back of the board with the standard expert craft and the masters of the concealment. You get your two up save, you get your re-rolling hit and a wound. It's hitting on threes, it is pretty damn good. That's an aggressor killer with lots of these marines and stuff going to three wounds and stuff like that, blade guard veterans. Ha <laughs> ha! Bang! Not anymore. Moving right along, we have the warp hunter. Another really cool model, basically just a boat with a big gun in it. It got its rules changed for its gun, specifically, and that's about it. It only went down 10 points, but its gun did get changed. So now it is still range, I think it was 36 before, now it's 24, heavy D3. Still strength 12, minus 4, but instead of being just flat D6 or whatever it was, uh, it is now D3 plus 3 and blast, but it can, th it can shoot things that are not visible to it. So ignoring line of sight, that's very, very good, because that is, the only other vehicle that did that was the Night Spinner, and its damage is nowhere even close to this thing, because it's only flat two, and it was AP zero. This is going to do some really serious damage. 195 points, and it can get a secondary profile, which is the Rift, which instead of D6 shots now, uh, it is just heavy three. It still auto hits. It's still doing a strength 12 minus four D6 damage. It's still a damn good flamer for what it does. Um, you know, that's a potential of 18 uh, wounds there. That's still brutal. For 195 points, it's pretty damn good. Moving 16 with a range of 12, 28 inch flamer. Pretty good, pretty good. Ooh, a controversial one, the Wraith Seer. Very, very not happy about this one. Basically, they've changed it from a HQ choice to a uh, heavy support choice. So now, if you want to run a, a Yandan Wraith Construct army, you have to run Spirit Seers, which is a little sad. I think that they should have kept it as a HQ, and they also reduced its wounds from 12 down to 9. Again, why? It is more tanky. It's supposed to be more tanky than a normal Wraith Lord, and they have 10 wounds. So, I don't really understand why they've done that, but 
Anyway, um, it's now plus three strength, minus three D3 plus three to its spear, um, which is good, I guess. I think it used to be like strength 12 or whatever it was, um, and now it's only strength 10. Um, it's still minus three and it does D3 plus three damage. Uh, instead of D6, it doesn't get the reroll uh, wound rolls of one or whatever it did to vehicles and monsters like it used to. Um, and it can no longer have a Wraith Cannon for free, but you can take all of the different upgrades on it, like all the different heavy weapon choices, which is nice. Um, and it has a new rule called Eldritch Wraith Construct, so it can ignore AP minus one. I really hope that that goes to all Wraith Constructs, just Blades, Guard, Lords, Knights, everything. Um, but for now, it's only on the Wraith Seer. Um, and of course, its powers got changed. So no longer does it have those three weird janky powers. It now draws from the same runes of battle as the the Hemlocks and the Spirit Seers and the Warlocks, etc. Um, and it knows one and can deny one, which is all right. I'm really, really upset that it got moved to heavy support. And it is now also 130 points as well, which is very, very sad. I think that they basically killed this out of the game. I would not be using one. Um, I can't really see myself using one because you can only get one gun on it instead of a Wraith Lord, which has two. Um, it, it, it still has its five up invuln, I guess, but you're losing a wound. Um, if the Wraith Lords ignore the AP minus one as well when the book comes out, then they're just not going to be usable. Um, there's no point in paying 130 points where you can get a Wraith Lord for the same price with two guns and a sword and like two flamers or something like that. And it does very similar damage. I guess it's a Psyker, but it doesn't even fill your HQ slot anymore, which is just sad. Very sad. And another model, another beautiful model, which I think Games Workshop has kind of killed, to be honest. Um, I can't really see myself using one. It's a Nightwing. I have two Nightwings myself, and I really, really, really adore them because they were like 160 points. Uh, they basically kept everything the way it was, although now, instead of having its extended wings and its retracted wings, it always is in retracted wings where it gets minus one to hit. It now gets plus one to hit against any aircraft uh, models when it shoots them, and it also has the five up invulnerable. Um, but you can give up all three of those, so minus one, plus one, and the five up, to instead of moving, um, like a flyer, your move characteristic just changed changes to 20. Yeah, so your move characteristics just changed to 20, which means you can literally go wherever you want. You're still an aircraft, um, but I think that you lose airborne, which means that you can be charged and stuff like that, I think. So it's still, um, it basically just gives it hover, which is weird. Um, I kind of don't like that as much. I wish it was still the same way as it was. Um, and I don't like that change at all. It still has a crystal target matrix as well, which doesn't really do that much. Um, and unfortunately it went from 160 to 220 points. It is very, very overpriced for what it does now, which is just sad. Um, and he will be missed. And now the Skathak Wraith Knight. Yes, baby. So this thing used to be 590 points for two Inferno Lancers, which were very similar to Heavy Wraith Cannons, like on the normal night. And the only rules it got was Deep Strike and Sky Leap from Hawk. So it could go back into reserve and then come back down later in a different turn. For an extra like about 150 points, maybe more. What? Now, it is 325 points base, and the Death Shroud Cannons are 55, and the Inferno Lancers are 65, so 435 or 445, I think, by my maths, something like that. It's basically 140, 150 points cheaper than what it was, and its guns got better. So the Inferno Lance now has the Melter rule as well, and the Death Shroud Cannon has a Focused and Dispersed, which are still um, five pluses to wound, uh, minus four, and otherwise it's AP zero, or in the case of Focused, it's now minus two, which is pretty damn good. Um, but damn, this thing, it can still Deep Strike and do all of that stuff, it can still Sky Leap, but holy crap, it came down in so much, like so many points that it is just way better now. You could definitely play with one of these. Um, you can deep strike your Wraith Knight and give it some, some Death Strike Cannons, some Inferno Lancers, and just pop stuff for days. Let's go! Scathax have made a return! 
And now we get to the Cobra and the Scorpion, the big boys, the, the large tanky boys with the big guns. So the Cobra, it still has its 4 plus explodes rule and the Scorpion still has its 5 plus explodes rule. The only thing that they really changed was the fact that now you get your 5 up in vulnerable save no matter how far you move, you just have it all the time. And on top of that they changed their guns and of course their points values. So the Scorpion, its gun went from uh, heavy 4d6, strength 12, minus 4, 3 damage, 6 is to wound, uh, 6 damage instead of 3 blast, to now it's just flat heavy 12 instead of 46, and it's always 3 damage. It's alright, it's okay, it loses out on that weird little janky rule, it's still range 60, but overall, it went from 710 points down to 500. Wow, 210 point decrease, that's pretty damn good. And the Cobra's gun went from being, I believe it was D6 shots, strength 16, minus five, uh, 2D6 damage, six is to wound, ID6 mortal wound, D3 mortal wounds in addition. Now it is a lot more consistent, it is 2D3 shots instead of D6. Still strength 16 minus five, but it is six damage flat instead of the 2D6, which is it's pretty good. I like the consistency of it, but overall the special rule now is on 4 plus to wound. You do D3 mortal wounds in addition. That's really good. So the consistency is way better, um, and it still has its, its explodes rule, and it's it went from 565 points down to 450. So the Cobra and the Scorpion are really playable now. Of course they are Titanic, which means that they can now move back and still shoot, which is really, really handy. They can't move back and charge, but they can still do all of the good stuff as if they were, you know, big Titan, blah, blah, blah. They move, they shoot, they fly into an enemy, they keep shooting no matter what, and then they blow up and they destroy our opponent's entire army and it's a good time. Last but not least, we get to the Revenant Titan. Now, this thing, it used to have the same rule as the Cobra and the Scorpion where it would move, it would get its, its in bond, blah, blah, blah. So now it is just a flat, Four plus in a vulnerable save, which is really, really nice. Love that. It's only against shooting, however. So if you're in combat, there's a risk that you can just get one shot by like a unit of 10 berserkers. It's pretty, um, not great. Something like that, like any kind of AP whatsoever, uh, you just kind of lose out on. Like a unit of, of like blade guard veterans, or like aggressors, or anything, any marine thing that hits you in combat. Anything that's strength 5, even, is gonna do a lot of damage. But it still does move 30, um, it still only has its two pulsars or sonic lances and its cloud burst. Um, I don't even really know if they changed that much. I think that the sonic lance changed a bit and the pulsar changed a little bit, so now it's flat 4 damage. Instead of doing like a less shots, more ridiculous damage, I'll leave it up on screen, you guys can see it. Um, but of course it can move back, uh, it can fall back, shoot and charge because it's titanic and it has another rule called titanic which allows it to charge in the same turn it fell back. It went from 2000 points and uh, before we get to that, it also now hits on threes in combat as well and still does this flat three damage, down to 1500 points. Mm, it's alright, I'd say it's alright. I think that if it dropped another 500 points, maybe a bit more as well, it would be good. Uh, compare it to like the Stomper, it's harder to kill than a Stomper, uh, I think it moves further as well, but the Stomper has so many more guns than this thing does, and it does so much more damage in combat with its big chain glaive, and it's like 500 points cheaper, and most people in the uh, Orc community are not very happy with the Stomper where it is now, so I think overall if it went down to a thousand, I'd probably run it in, you know, some good games and stuff like that, but 1500 seems a little overcosted. Um, seeing as it, it counts as one model for objectives, and it doesn't get traits, has no stratagems, no relics or anything like that, nothing. It's just it. Doesn't seem that great. I'll leave up the rules here for the Phantom Titan. You can pause and look at that yourself if you want. I don't really care because the Phantom Titan is essentially a cabinet model. You can't play with it because it is just way too expensive unless you're playing Forge War, unless you're playing um, Apocalypse, in which case I think it has its own rules in that game mode anyway. Uh, or you're playing traditional Apocalypse, then you can look at it, feel be my guest. Uh, and then I'll leave up the normal points values for everything else up there as well. By the way, if I didn't say, Shadow Spectres went down a point as well. Um, and that's that. That's all of the rules for the new stuff. Basically, the TLDR, if you were looking for that, is take Hornets in every single game that you play. 
Shadow Spectres are our Lynxes and Warp Hunters are now back on the menu. Wraith Seers and Nightwings have been culled from the game because they suck. Um, the Revenant Titan is still twice as many points as it should be. And uh, Cobras and Scorpions are not bad. And then... Uh, yeah, wait for the rules for the Vampire Raider to come out. That's what I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be playing that in some friendly games because I love, I love my baby. And otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.